Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back, my friends, to the Metaverse Extract. Have I got a doozy for you today, folks. Thank you for joining me. My name is Paul Carpenter, and this is the Metaverse Extract. And today, we are talking about, is an NFT safe? And my God, my friends, do we have an episode for you. Thank you for joining and coming to see me. This is the Metaverse Extract. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the question here is, is this safe? And the answer is, uh, kind of. It all depends, really, on the beginning of this whole thing. And it's, there's a lot of information to go through today. So, I guess we just start off with, first of all, are NFTs safe? And you have to understand that what we're talking about here is numbers, digits, ones and zeros that are being held somewhere. And it all depends on what network you're actually connected to. So like it could be Binance or Litecoin or Ethereum. Ethereum being the most well-known. So let's go over Ethereum and some of the ideas here. Now, there's something called an ERC, and this is the, and I'll just read it to you right off of um, the internet. That's what we're using. And if you look at it here, you can see it says, what is an ERC? It says right here, ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Common. It's a document that's a smart contract, programmers are using the Ethereum blockchain platform. They describe rules in, the con in these contracts or in these documents that Ethereum-based tokens must comply with. Now, that might sound confusing, right? And, and it is. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Because there's different types of these ERCs. And that's really what's kind of important here, okay? Now, when you look up the different types of the list of ERCs, which I'm, I'm doing here, it's this absolute overwhelming kind of thing. Like, it's like, whoa, how am I going to know what's what? Because if you look at the list, it is this long list of all these different things. But really, the, the ones that are the most popular are here. All right, here we go. Let me get this. Now, as you can see in this article... Oh, you can't see it. Here we go. <laughs> As you can see in this article, there are ones that are more popular than others, ones that are used more times than not, and that are these top 10 right here. Uh, now, the ones that, we that you need to know, really, in my opinion, are an ERC-1155, an ERC-721, an ERC-777, and an ERC-20. As you can see, everything I mentioned is on that list of the top 10. And why? Because you see, folks, the thing is, these are being used because they do certain things. And each one of these things that they do are quite important, you see. So an ERC-1155 can be uh, one of two things. It can be non-fungible and it can be fungible. An ER721 is what would be an actual NFT where there's only one of one and there's no reproducing it. It can be music, it can be art, it can be anything, an agreement, so on and so forth, right? And then there's an ER77 uh, which is, uh, it, it started to get more 
uh, involved. There's the ability for potential enhancements with ERC-20. Um, it's getting overwhelming, okay, folks? And then, uh, and, and, but, but more so than anything, these ideas like ERC-1155 uh, uh, can be used like a, a game token, but can also be used as a version of maybe a um, an NFT itself, which is transferable in, in, in the idea. An ERC-20 uh, is fungible tokens where it's like you can have dollar bills, where each dollar bill represents the same thing, but it has a different serial code on it. Uh, so then after that, you have to really get into the next piece of this puzzle, which is the a great article that was just put out by the way and i'm going to share it with you now which was on coindesk which talks about whether something is being held and how it's being held and therefore because of that um and the way that it's being held is on whether or not people uh trust the project now the thing is that people will trust a project based on one of these two things. And that is whether it is IPFS or whether it's Filecoin. Now, now we just went down a whole new rabbit hole. <laughs> and you're like, Paul, stop doing this to us. And I get it. I, I'm just trying to share all of the information so that you know everything that you're getting into when you're getting into these new types of investments. It shouldn't be just like, oh, I'm going for a picture and I'm just going for the community. You should know who these people are, where they're holding their things, and whether it has value or not. That's very important for you as a person who's going to be investing in some kind of project. So IPFS stands for, and here we go, Interplanetary File System. That's right. Here, let me give it to you. Uh, so you can see this full screen. So it's an interplanetary file system right there. And an interplanetary file system is a protocol and network designed to create a content addressable peer-to-peer -peer method of storing and sharing hypermedia in a decentralized file system. Whoa. Whoa. For those of you and or myself who are not completely computer literate or maybe not completely computer or completely or computer literate at all. I can't even say the words anymore. Oh, my God, that sounded heavy. So let me break it down for you because it's very simple. Like I said at the beginning of the video, how do you know where this thing is being held? And if they say that it's decentralized or it's in a blockchain and they're holding the memory in that way, you still need to have people who are still trading that blockchain or involved in that blockchain by mining it. You still need to have people that are going to be holding on to the actual server space in some way, shape, or form through the blockchain, right? And if not, then it's going to be held on a formed uh hard drive space like AWS, where it's an actual space that you're paying for instead of it being on the blockchain, which is just numbers floating around on the internet, which in the end, end up on some kind of server space. So it ends up saying that on either way, whether it's a blockchain where it's a bunch of people who are connected to the information and not any one place really is holding on to it, what happens if that blockchain itself falls apart and it doesn't work anymore right and then the other side of things is like well what happens if people don't pay for the electrical bill for the server space on the other side so then in the end how do you know if your non-fungible token dependent on which one you've bought dependent upon which uh, network you're connected to and dependent on which which, uh, which file system it's being held on good god let alone trying to find one project that's out there that you like. So that was today's message of are the NFTs safe? And the question is, they can be. The, the more that you have people on a system, like a blockchain system, and the more robust that that, robust that that system becomes, 
then yes, that becomes a bit heavier, but you still have to think about, once again, what happens if somebody turns off the lights? All the thoughts around this come down to redundancy of the actual image, who's holding it, and who's really involved in the project. So that was today's message on our NFT safe. My friends, thank you so much for coming and hanging out here on the Metaverse Extract. My name is Paul Carpenter, and I thank you very much for coming and hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming to the Metaverse Extract.